In our morning rounds, climate change and seasonal allergies. It's finally feeling like spring in much of the country, but that's bringing an extra dose of pollen. If you're among the nearly one in three Americans with seasonal allergies, and you know the long winter and climate change may be packing a one-two punch of misery for you. Dr. Hill Holly Phillips joins us at the table. Listen, we heard all this, hi Holly, we heard all this winter about the uh, polar vortex, which most people had never heard of, heard of the phrase. Now we have to know about something called the pollen vortex. What <laughs> does that mean? Right, well it turns out that, that our really, really cold winter, we think we should get this sort of silver lining at the end and maybe have a less intense allergy season. That's probably not going to happen. You know, what usually happens is spring br brings our tree pollen, right. summer brings our grass pollen, and then in the fall, we see ragweed. Because our spring was so delayed this year, many things are blooming all at once. What should have bloomed over the course of a month is now popping up all together, so we're seeing really, really high pollen levels. You seeing it in your practice? What are you noticing? You know, it, it, over the last week, it's so interesting. We went from a really bad cold and flu season, everybody coming in sniffling and sneezing. Now, I'm in this really, really bad allergy season. Everybody's mm. doing just so the same. So how is it that CO2 affects your allergies? Right, so carbon dioxide over the last century has been going up. Uh, uh, it comes from burning fossil fuels mm -hmm. like gas in our car. And while it's not good for humans, ironically, it actually can supercharge some plants to grow. You know, the uh, more mm -hmm. carbon dioxide makes them grow faster, more robustly, and makes them release more pollen. Ragweed is one of those plants. So we're, that's one of the ways we're seeing the climate change change the type of allergens that are in the air. People who didn't have allergies in one area might now. Mm. So, so the, the people that come to your office and say, doctor, make it stop, what do you, what do you tell them? <laughs> you know, the, some of the most important things are just to make sure we keep the pollen outside of your home. So if you can, <laughs> shower right when you get in or take off your outer clothes when you come in. Um, yes, and, Charlie, keep the pollen outside of your outside, home. Outside, yeah. outside. Yeah. And, you know, no early morning <laughs> jogging when mm. pollen is, is, is at its highest. Yeah. There's also been some newly FDA-approved um, uh, prescription medicines for, for allergies, mm -hmm. specifically one for ragweed as well. And the most important thing, don't stress. We didn't know this, but a recent study showed being stressed and anxiety actually can worsen your allergy mm. symptoms. So if we can not worry about it, it's even better. Thank you. Easier said than done, yeah, though, when you're wheezing all over the place. It's <laughs> tough. True. Thank you, Holly.